All right, welcome back everybody. Today I thought we could go over how to use custom Docker containers inside of TrueNAS. Uh, so TrueNAS is a really nice like storage server and it can host all of your, I don't know, tools and such. Um, so I figured with us having used Docker in the past and now having this server kind of at my disposal, I can show how I had set up to use Docker um, for, for example, that same R or Docker container. Um, but it will work for any Docker container, even if it's not in, well, especially if it's not in the, the true charts from um, the kind of the community. Um, if you guys find this helpful, uh, let me know down in the comments or um, can leave a thumbs up too kind of helps me understand what is what is helpful for people out there. Um, so what we're going to do initially is talk a little bit about what True Charts is because I had mentioned that. And what True Charts is, is it's a, um, a, a bunch of different tools that are available to be started up on your, your TrueNAS server with essentially a click of a button. Um, so by adding this repository to your TrueNAS server, you're able to have all of those different applications at your disposal, which is super nice. And like I said, you just click install and you're pretty much good to go uh, right away. Unfortunately, there are some applications that are not in here. Um, the one that I'm going to talk about today is, like I had shown down here, um, yeah, so our studio is here, um, but it's an example of how to install any Docker container, uh, not just this one. Um, as, as long as there's like a UI front that you want to interact with uh, for your, your TrueNAS server. Um, so the one, like I mentioned today, we'll be using this Rocker R Studio just because it's one that we have worked with in the past. Um, the things to pay attention to are going to be this this rocker and then our studio. So this is like the user by rocker, and then our studio is the actual image name, uh, and then we can specify a version as well to that that image that we want to work with. Uh, if we go over here, there's actually some environmental variables that we're working with as well. Uh, today. So if you have a Docker container that you want to run and there's some environmental variables that it wants you to set, um, there's a really easy way to do that too with the TrueNAS server. Uh, and then another example that I have is um, Radar to keep track of like movies and wish lists and stuff. Um, and since it's not the, the default search, if we go to here and then pull an image, um, the default search is going to be Docker Hub. But if the image that we want to search for is not on Docker Hub, for example, Radar, um, you have to specify the full path name to uh, the actual image. So here it's lscr.io linux server and then radar so in that first box um, you'd put the whole path instead of just the the user rocker and then our studio so let's go ahead and um, grab the uh, rocker our studio and we'll do a different version than what i have here so i have the latest already in there so for example we'll do rocker dash our studio and like i mentioned since this is on Docker Hub, it's going to know to look in Docker Hub for this Rocker R Studio combination. Um, but for like Radar, we would need to add in this, this beginning part. So we got our image specified and then the actual tag that we want. Um, we're not gonna use latest, we're gonna use an older one. So let's scroll down. We'll use this, 4.3.0. So if we go back here, we can type in 4.3.0. And then since we don't need a username or password to pull this, like they're all public, uh, we can just go ahead and click save. So what this is gonna do is it's going to run through, make sure that the Rocker R Studio is available 
in Docker Hub, and then it's going to download it to our machine. Um, so this will depend on your internet speed and that kind of thing, but um, it'll pull it down to, to your machine. Awesome, okay, so now we have um, the new image downloaded, which you can see here. So it's Rocker, our studio, and then 4.3.0. Um, so I like downloading. I know you can download the latest, but then you don't have the version information quickly visible in the tags. So I really like to see uh, the version number. So I always specify that when I am pulling images um, to, to use. So from there, what we can do is head on over to launching our Docker container and we'll have to give it a name. Um, so let's go back here. We can see that the previous one that I did, I called our studio server and we can see that it's running um, our studio and it's the latest. But what we're gonna do is we're going to launch a Docker image. We're gonna call this one our studio, studio and then 430. Okay, and then the version, we can't change this one. Um, the image repository, so this is where we're gonna specify again, uh, the Rocker R Studio. So if you didn't wanna download it before, you can download it at this stage. Um, I just like to download it before to make sure that like the tag and everything works before getting to the point of trying to launch it. Kind of sort that out first. So you can type in again, rocker slash our studio, studio, and then the version, uh, we want 4.3.0. Like I said, if we don't have it downloaded at this stage, what we can do is download it. Um, but if we leave this as default, then we should be completely fine. Now we'll use a couple environment variables, just as an example. Um, one of them is going to be the um, root equals true. So we'll set the variable tr uh, root equal to true. So we go back. Um, this one shouldn't actually work. Yeah. All right. Let's go back over here. We'll go root and it's got to match exactly. And then the value that we want to assign to root is going to be true. And we'll add another one. And what we want to add is disable off. So this means that when we log in, or when we go to the link, we're not going to need to type in our username and password. Since this is on our own machine, it's not too big of a deal. Um, on a public machine, you probably don't wanna do public. On like a, a university machine, you probably don't wanna do disable off. Um, but root is helpful if you want to install like libraries that a particular package depends on. Um, but for this case, we'll just do true again. That way, when we go to the link, we can, um, yeah, it's not going to let me uh, because the, the page doesn't exist anymore. Um, let's see, what else do we need in here? So this is the port forwarding. Um, so if there is that UI component, you're going to have to specify the container port. And a lot of times in the Docker image, it's going to say the port that it's using. In this case, it's 8787. Uh, and then we have to tell it what outside port to bind that to. So when we go to the um, server's IP address, we can give it the correct um, the, the, the correct port to, to get to the container that we want to use. So the container port uh, is 8787. And for radar, I believe it's 7878. Yeah, 7878. So here you would type 7878 if you were using radar, for example. And then the node port, something that is unique to TrueNAS, and I'm sure it's this way for some particular reason, is that it has to be a port that's greater than 15,000. So we wouldn't be able to put in 8787 here, 9,000, my bad. Um, we wouldn't be able to put in 8787 here because it's less than 9,000. So what I do in order to make it easy, I know that our studio runs on port 8787. I just go ahead and I put a one in front of this. That way I know in the future um, when I want to use this, this particular container, I'll just start it up and then I'll be able to go to 
one eight seven eight seven uh, for the True NAS Scales IP address. And then for um, storage paths, I just have an example folder here, so we can tag on our tack on our folder. Um, so inside of our container, this is where it will be working with radar. You'll have to specify probably the folder where like your database lives or um, like your movie files and stuff. That way it can see what you have. And then the mount path, um, I happen to know that for our studio, there's a folder inside that's called our studio that it's supposed to set as its working directory. So I can just go ahead and leave it like that. And then when we get inside of our container, um, slash our studio will then point to our test.r. Uh, it will have our test.r inside of the container. So that should be pretty much everything else. If you go ahead and save it, what it's going to do now is it's going to start spinning that up with all the variables that we set. So we're not going to have to log in and we're going to have root permissions. So if we go over here, um, it's deploying it. Uh, so we should have um, root permissions and then let's see, it's not going to let me. And then um, we should be able to get to it with our 18787. Ah, we need to uh, put a colon in here. 18787. There we go. So now we have our, our studio. If we go ahead and um, go to our studio, we can see that our test R is here. So with radar, um, we would have this, this mounted, and that's actually living inside of our server but our Docker container can see that. Uh, so we're able to keep all of our versions of um, packages or our particular uh, version of radar running. Um, if we had specified not use uh, latest, for example, all of the software is gonna be contained, but it will still be able to interact with files that are outside, like our, our movie file folder, for example. Um, it'll still be able to see and keep track of all of that kind of stuff. But there's much more in here as far as directions go. Um, you can have a uh, time zone for radar. We would pass in an environmental variable. Um, we have a user ID, a group ID. Um, anything dash E is something that you would then convert from here. So this would be your variable name, and this would be the value when setting up that Docker container. So if you guys found this helpful, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, otherwise, yeah, let me know what you think.